Hello everyone. Welcome to Tech and Target. I am Hemant. So this is a second video of the Mind Tree Coding Question Series. A quick note before solving the questions of this session. So we have already uploaded the part one of this series as well as the aptitude questions that were asked in Mind Tree. So the links of both of the videos will be provided in the description. So please go ahead, watch them and come back here so that you will understand each of these codes easily. So now let's get started with the video. Now coming to this question. So the question uh, says, so we have to complete a function that takes an integer n and returns the sum of all the even numbers, which are uh, less than or equal to n. So they have given some inputs as well. So they have given five and the output of that would be six. And if the input is six, then we have to return 12. Now, this is okay, but how we are getting this now? So basically, if the value of n, okay, if the value of n is five, what do you have to do? Let's say we will create some variable uh, answer or let's say the sum for this case, we'll initialize it with zero. Now, what we will do, we just have to find whichever the even numbers that we will get and we just have to add them to the sum variable, right? Now, what will be the first even number that we will be getting? So the first even number that we will get is obviously two, right? So uh, apart from zero, right? We should not consider zero, right? So even we consider zero, then that would not affect our sum, right? So we will start looping from two because that saves our one extra iteration. So we'll start looping from two. We will go on till less than or equal to the n that they have given. And in each iteration, instead of incrementing it by one, we will increment it by two because so after two, the next even number would be four, not three, right? So if we increment it by one, then the i variable or the iteration variable that will be three, which is odd there. So that is not correct. So to get the next even number, we should add two, right? So we should add two to the iteration variable. So this is your for loop and this is your sum variable. You will, you will update that sum by your iteration variable. So this is i is equal to two, uh, i plus is equal to two, i less than or equal to n. So basically you are just trying to add all the even numbers which are less than or equal to that particular n that they have provided and you will finally return that sum, right? So whatever the value will be get uh, will be stored in the sum, you will return that, right? So basically you will directly return sum here. Now we will see how it runs for this test case. Okay. In the first test case, the value of n is five, right? So when the n is five, sum is initialized as zero. Now we will run a loop from two, right? So firstly, the i variable will be two and then what will happen when i is equal to two, then sum plus would be two. So sum was initially zero. Now it will be updated with two because zero plus two would be two. So some variable now will be having two next. So in a, if after each iteration, the i variable will be increased with two. So after i is equal to two, the next will be four. So is four less than or equal to five? So n is five, right? So is four less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. So if that's the case, then the sum variable will be again added with the current i variable, right? So s plus is equal to four. Now previous s was two. For that, we are trying to add four. So this would result out to be six. Now, the after i is equal to four, the next even number will be six, right? So i is equal to four. So i four plus two would be six. So the value of i would be six in the third iteration. So in this iteration, so we will check the condition, right? Is six less than or equal to five? So n is equal to five, right? So is six less than or equal to five? No, it is not. So if that's not the case, then we will come out of the loop and we will return sum. So what is stored in the sum variable? The sum stored is six. So we will return six as an output here. Now, so in the same way, so in the same way, what will happen? So yes was zero for loop will be starting from two, i less than or equal to n, i plus is equal to two, right? So sum plus is equal to, 
or if this is sum, then sum plus is equal to i, and you will uh, return sum variable, right? So when this condition does not uh, get satisfied, then we will directly return sum here. Now we will run it for the second test case, right? So when the value of n is six, so if the value of n is six, what will happen? Let's see. Now in the first iteration, i value will be two, right? So sum will also sum also will be zero. So this will be increment. Uh, so we will check whether this two is less than or equal to n. Okay, what is the value of n here? It is six. So is two less than or equal to six? Yes, it is. So we will increment yes by two. So because as i value is two here, so we will increment yes by two, which will turn out to be s is equal to two. Now the value stored in s is two. Now we will increment i with two, right? I with two, right? So I was two previously. Now it will we will increment it by two, which will turn out to be four, right? Now we will check is four less than or equal to six? Yes, it is. So the previous s value was two. We will increment that with four because the value of i is four. Then the answer, uh, the sum gets updated to so two plus four will be six, right? So six gets stored in the sum variable now after doing this the value of i gets updated to 6 because 4 plus 2 would be 6 now i is equal to 6 now we will check the condition whether 6 is less than or equal to 6 yes 6 is equal to 6 so this will uh, this condition will still get accepted now the previous value of s was 6 now it will added with uh, it will be added with the current i value which is 6 again now the sum would be 6 plus 6 that will be 12 right now this will be 12 and i value gets updated to 6 plus 2 which would be 8 now if we go ahead and check this is 8 less than or equal to 6 no it is not so once the uh, condition gets false then we will directly return sum which is the uh, in this test case is 12 so we will return 12 so that's how we solve it so we will see the so we will see it in code and we will uh, move for the next question right okay so this is the code for this so uh, we have to go for sum of uh, even numbers less than n so basically what we are doing here so we are provided with a function sum which accepts the parameter n and then we will initialize the sum variable as zero and we'll start looping from the two uh, we'll start looping from i is equal to 2. We'll go on till less than that i less than or equal to n. And after each iteration is done, we will increment it with by, uh, with 2. Because if we increment it by 1, then uh, the sum of 1 to an even number leads to an odd number, which is no which is of no use to us because we only want even numbers. So we will increment it by 2 so that we will get next even number after every iteration. So we will add, so we will add the current i to the sum at each iteration. And the once this condition uh, gets false, when this condition uh, turns out to be false, we will directly return whatever is stored in our sum variable. Right. So that's how uh, we will solve this question. Now let's check for some uh, basic inputs. So firstly, we'll check for five. So if you check for five, we get answer as six. So which was anticipated. So if you see here, if for five, the output should have been six and we have got it. And for six, it should have been 12. So we'll check for that as well. Now, instead of five, we'll give six and the answer should be 12 here, right? So if I give six, the answer should be 12 and that we have got here. Now, I hope uh, I made it clear it clear to you. Now, let's move on to the second question. Now, we will move on to the second question, which is, so given an integer array and an integer to be searched in it, so we have to return the number of times uh, or repetitions it is present in the array okay we will see with the input we'll see the input format and we'll see uh, some basic examples to understand this one so the first line contains an integer n denoting the number of elements in the array and each line i of the subsequent n subsequent lines contains an integer describing elements of the array and then the last line contains an integer denoting the element that to be found in the array okay we'll see okay so basically if we ab uh, absorb this test case here, so the first uh, will be 
n so the first value will be n and next n lines denotes the elements of the array right so 13 20 16 16 19 so this is the array and these are the elements that are present in the array uh, which is of size n right so if this is an array this will be of size n so in this case the value of n is 5 so there will be five elements in the array and this element is the key element that to be searched in this particular array we have to tell how many times it is present in the given array right so that's what we have to do here and coming okay now in this test case if the key is 16 so we will count how many times this is present in the given array so so we will what we will do is we just run a loop and we will check at each at each iteration whether the value at that particular index is equal to the current key right we will check whether the uh, element at that particular index is equal to the key if that is the case we will increment a count variable or if that's not the case then we will ignore that right we will go for the next iteration okay so using that approach what we will do in the first iteration we'll check is 13 okay firstly we'll initialize count variable as zero now we will check is 13 equal as 16 no we will ignore it now we'll check again for the next element is 20 equal to 16 no it is not so we'll ignore again so now we'll go for next iteration now we'll check so is 16 equal to 16 yes it is equal so we will increment our count variable by one now, after that, we'll go for next iteration. Now, we'll again check, is 16 equal to 16? Yes, it is. So, if it is the case, then we will increment our count variable. Then we'll go for next iteration, which is 19. So, we'll check whether 19 is equal to 16. No, it is not. If that's the case, we'll ignore. So, after we, uh, you know, exhausted the array, we just have to return our count variable, which is, in our case, it will be 2. So, we will return 2 as our answer. Now, coming to the second test case, the value of n is 5, which denotes the size of the array, and there will be n elements here, and then the element that we have to search for in the array. Now, the same approach we will apply here as well. What will happen? First, we will check. Okay, so initially we have to initialize our count variable as 0. In the first iteration, we'll check whether is 18 equal to 25. No, we will ignore. We'll go for next iteration. Is 14 equal to 25? No. We'll go for next iteration. Whether 7 is equal to 25? No, it is not. So we will go for the next iteration. Is 20 equal to 25? It is not again. So we will move on for the next iteration. We will check for 16. Whether 16 is equal to 25? No, again. So we'll go for next iteration. And we see that we have exhausted the array. And our count variable is still... Uh, having the value zero and we will return zero as an answer, right? So in the first test case, we are written two. In the second test case, we will return zero. Now we will see that, uh, we will see it, how to apply this logic in the code, right? Now, basically, uh, let me open that solution here. So basically we are given an array and an key element to be searched, how many times it is repeated in the particular array that they have given, right? And we have to return how many times it is repeating, right? So for that reason, we will create a counter variable and we will initialize it with zero and we will start looping from the first element of the array till the last element of the array. And at each iteration, after each iteration, we will increment the index variable with one and we will check, we'll do what? In each iteration, we will check whether the element at that particular index is it equal to the key element that we have got. So if that is the case, we'll increment the counter variable. If that is not, we will directly uh, ignore that and we'll go on to the next iteration. So once we exhaust the array, once we complete the entire iteration of the array, then we will finally return our count. So that's how we do it. Now let's check for some inputs here. Now, if you see, so the first input was, uh, okay. I'll increment, I'll increase the size. So first input was five, then 13, then 20, then 16, then 16 again, then 19 again, then 16 here. So the answer should be two. So we will be getting two here. Now we'll run for the second test case. So the second test case is five, 18, 14, 7, 20, 16, and 25. The answer should be zero and obviously we are getting zero as our answer so yeah this is how we solve it and
thanks for watching till the end so please share this video among your friends so they might they also might be having mind tree uh, exam so it will help them as well as well as the channel so yeah please share it among them and uh, yeah thanks for watching take care bye bye